Hello, my name is Lorraine Burkett. I am a faculty member at the University of Vermont and coordinator of the Organica project. The following presentation is a brief update of some of the research results from the Organica project, which was given at the Vermont Tree Fruit Growers Annual Meeting on February 8, 2011 in Middlebury, Vermont. The Organica Project is a project supported by the USDA Organic Research and Extension Initiative. The project's official title is Using New Alternatives to Enhance Adoption of Organic Apple Production Through Integrated Research and Extension. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the members of the Organica team. Members of the team include faculty and technical staff at the Universities of Vermont, Maine, and Arkansas. The individuals listed here represent the disciplines of pomology, plant pathology, entomology, soil health and management, ag economics, and organic farming. Not listed are the many growers who provide guidance and insight to the project, including the members of our advisory panel. The Organica project would not be possible without funding from the USDA, from the various universities involved in the project, and from growers. We much, very much appreciate your support. After extensive stakeholder input, we proposed in 2006 to examine organic apple production systems that reflected consumer preferences for newer cultivars and organically grown food and grower desires for sustainability and profitability. We initiated a transdisciplinary multi-state research project to determine the opportunities and challenges of organic apple production within the two major production systems growers were using to change to new cultivars and with five of the top apple cultivars cultivars that growers identified as important to the future of the industry. The orchard systems are 1. A new orchard planted with young trees purchased from a nursery and 2. A top grafted orchard. That is an established older orchard onto which new cultivars are grafted. The orchards being studied in replicated plots in each or orchard system are Zestar, Ginger Gold, Honeycrisp, Macallan, and Liberty and Liberty being a scab resistant cultivar. The first grant received, or phase one of the long-term project, covered the orchard establishment period. A summary of progress during that first phase is on the Organica website. We are currently in phase two, the early bearing years of the, of the two orchard systems under investigation. In this presentation, I would like to just give an update of results from the 2010 growing season compared to the 2009 results. The current research objectives of the project are, one, to continue to evaluate the n these rather relatively new, newer apple cultivars and incorporate research generated knowledge of apple ecosystem dynamics into the organic production systems to determine sustainability and profitability. Two, field test commonly recommended organic foliar nutrient sources and evaluate their impacts on fruit yield, quality, tree nutrition, and health, including impact on disease and arthropod pests. And three, evaluate the benefits of different ground cover strategies in promoting tree health, plant and soil water status, and yield and fruit quality. There is also an important outreach component to the project and the, which has the objective of to, to continue to collaboratively develop and implement with stakeholders a multi-dimensional extension program that addresses their priorities and needs, enables whole farm planning, improves competitiveness, and enhances the ability of growers to grow and market high quality organic apples. <coughs> As was mentioned, the project started in 2006 when we planted Orchard One with nurture trees and top grafted another orchard, which we designated Orchard Two. Both orchards have Honeycrisp, Ginger Gold, Macallan, Liberty, and Zestar. In Orchard One, the rootstock is Bud 9, except for Honeycrisp, which is on M26. In Orchard Two, the rootstock is M26, and the inner stock, 
which was the original cultivar of each tree, is either Macintosh or Liberty. And these two varieties are blocked um, within the, the orchard for research purposes. These two orchards are located at the University of Vermont Horticultural Research Center, commonly referred to as the Hort Farm. These pictures show how these orchards appeared in 2006. Another orchard at, is at the uh, University of Maine's Highmore Farm, and it is also part of the project and is involved in ground cover and weed management research associated with Objective 3. In this slide, you can see Orchard 1 as it appeared in 2006 and in 2010. As been reported previously, we have had challenges in both organic orchards at the University of Vermont Hort Farm. That's Orchard 1 and Orchard 2. In Orchard 1, the trees were not filling out their spaces as was expected. In other words, they showed poorer growth than what was expected. Potential reasons for this include the rootstock bud 9 may not be well matched to this specific site. Weed management posed difficulties during the initial years. Uh, there may have been possible root damage caused by the use of a weed badger, and also uh, weeds may have competed with the trees. Water stress may have impacted tree development. The orchard is irrigated and there is uh, mulch underneath the trees, but the site is very sandy and the trees might, might have been water stressed at times. In addition, the organically approved fungicides we are using in this orchard, sulfur and lime sulfur, are known to negatively impact photosynthesis. And the trees have had high Phytophagus mite populations, um, either European red mite and or and or two-spotted spider mite populations, which may have added stress to these young trees. Because of the lack of growth that we were seeing in Orchard 1, in 2009 we started new research to address potential re reasons for this lack of growth. Dr. Ray Moran, Moran, a member of the Organica team at the University of Maine, started weed management trials in Maine. And Terry Bradshaw, another member of the Organica team, started a master's thesis looking to see if applying kelp extract products, which are considered biostimulants, would have a positive impact on growth and, and other factors um, in the orchard. Because of the concerns in Orchard 1, and because we've had some tree health problems in Orchard 2, which I will get to in a few minutes in this presentation, we started to plan for another organic orchard that would address these challenges. I will talk about this new orchard at the end of the presentation. Before I get into some of the research results, I want to show you pictures of Orchard 2. The picture on the left shows the signs that were grafted onto the trunks of 18-year-old trees in 2006. The picture on the right is the orchard in 2010. Trees have died in this orchard. Each year we have had to pull out dead trees. The story of what cultivars are not doing as well as others has changed actually over the years, but I'll get to that in a few slides from now. Before I present some of the research results, I just wanted to quickly state that we are collecting an enormous amount of data in the various areas listed on this slide. Disease incidence and severity, arthropod pest damage, population levels, um, ben uh, beneficial arthropod information, horticultural data, measurements of soil health, and um, we track economic inputs. Again, an extensive amount of data are collected each year. Bottom line, these are the two essential questions of the Organica project. Is organic apple production profitable and sustainable in New England with the knowledge and tools we have? Will there be a long-term difference in profitability between the two organic apple systems under investigation? A few slides ago, I mentioned that we have had some tree death in Orchard 2, which is the top grafted orchard. Each year, a tree health assessment is conducted. Each tree is given a rating from 0 to 3, 
which you can see um, on this slide. In Orchard 2, initial survey of new grafts was very, very good for most cultivars. And the survival was, was very good and ranged from 94 to 100 percent initial survival. Except for Zestar, which had only uh, 84 percent of trees with at least one live sign in April 2007, one year after the grafting, initial grafting. By 2008, a number of Zestar trees and to a lesser extent Macallan trees were completely dead or of such low vigor that they would not be profitable for commercial production. So we've continued um, this tree assessment um, every year and uh, including 2009 and 2010. In July of 2010, these are the percentages of all trees originally planted that had a healthy rating of three during the, the assessment. On the, on the slide, block one um, are the trees that had liberty um, as the inner stock, and block two are the trees in the orchard that had Macintosh as the inner stock. There were no statist statistical differences among the cultivars and no differences between the blocks. You can see that Ginger Gold and Honeycrisp rank the highest in percentage of healthy trees, roughly 95% per had good growth. Macallan and Zestar have the lowest percentage of trees that are, are growing, uh, that are growing well. It is interesting to note that Zestar trees appears, appeared to have stabilized. Trees that did not graft well or did not grow well the first few years of orchard establishment are now um, out of the picture. You know, they, they've died and have been pulled out. And trees that survived seem to be doing okay. Whereas now, it appears that Macallan trees seem to be not doing as well in this orchard and continue to show pure, poor growth and some trees continue to die. So, the bottom line, from a practical standpoint, some apple cultivars may do better than others in a top grafting situation. I, I would just go through a few slides to give you an idea of tree size in terms of tree height and spread in the both, both years, 2009 and 2010. The, the data presented in this slide is from Orchard 2. Height is represented in meters. There were no significant differences among the cultivars in tree height in either year for in Orchard 2. In general, height increased over the two years.